Okay guys, so in today's review, I'm going to be looking at my Rumble gameplay mid and how I turn a losing bot lane into a winning lane or at least an even lane or at least a lane I can actually get income from and help my bot lane out. So as you can see now, uh, Lucian's right now 3-1 and one, and you know, it's even in CS but I really need to get down there as soon as possible if I am to make sure that I can ex first I need to get a lead in my own lane and then I need to extend it to bot lane. So let's watch this play out. So first I actually identify throughout the first five, six, seven minutes of this game that Annie isn't actually that good. She's not really respecting me and she's not really doing that well against trades. So I aim to push this out, it's a cannon wave. Now look what I do. I TP from mid at 5 minutes 55 because I just saw Lucian kill Jin. Soraka's back. I'm I'm almost in like a 2v1 here. So I come in. Really bad ult, by the way. Again, so showing that you don't have to do picture perfect roams to make them work. Now, this is kind of lucky, but I flash out, and then Lucian BMs me, and I get a kill. So, there's the first roam that gets me a lead. Look what Annie's doing. Look at the current CS. I'm only one CS behind right now, and I'm going to collect all this, or do I freeze it for Jin? I even leave this for Jin, okay, to get him back in the game. I leave that for Jin. Annie's still barely pushing in my wave, so I'll end up losing some CS here. So, she's right now got a 10 CS lead but I'm still ahead by 800 gold because I just got a double kill. So if you're looking to figure out, okay, when is a roam bot worth it? Well, if you can get two kills or if you can get two kills for your team, even one kill, you're pretty much always going to end up up in value. In very rare cases, you're not, unless they can somehow get a turret plating, but obviously Annie can't do that. So... Now, Annie and I have separate kind of back timers or rotation timers, which is good and bad for me. Uh, bad in the fact that Yudia tried to solo dragon there and almost died. But now good that she has to go to her wave, and now I can try and impact the map. So again, we see Lucian and Rel. Lucian's 5-2, and two, Jin is 1-1. One and one. This Lucian is playing way too aggressive, and I'm trying to punish it as much as I can through optimal roam timers. I'm not just roaming whenever I can. I'm pushing in my wave, forcing Annie to come back so we have a roam advantage, and then we're going in. So here I get a little bit of a better ult off. Again, not perfect. But we get... Oh, what happens here? Nothing perfect. But again, I'm only 10 CS behind. I've now developed a 1k gold lead. Yudi gets dragon. So, yes, I roam. I lose a bit of CS. But what do we get on the map? We get dragon pressure and we get bot lane pressure. I don't know if Jin gets the kill here. He doesn't. Pantheon then comes to my lane, which is really nice. Gets the solo kill. Perfect. So, good teamwork there. And we're still at a gold deficit. So we're still behind 800 gold. So right now I have a lead, but I still need to translate that to my team. And we're slowly getting there with some macro plays. So notice again now, the entire mid lane, Annie and I are now on different timers because of my first roam. My first roam, I think it's six minutes, set us on different timers, which means... A roam heavy champion or someone who is roam oriented means they can roam whenever they want pretty much. As you can see, I'm doing now. I've roamed three times in the last three minutes. And now where am I going? I'm going top lane to try and help this Pantheon out. Unfortunately, I think he dies. But again, I end up getting the kill all because of my one TP at six minutes. That one got us some kills bot lane. And yes, I was lucky with the Lucian. It wouldn't have changed the outcome of my other follow-up ganks. And two, because I was able to get and disrupt the normal laning phase process that goes on in mid lane, where you're both in lane at the same time taking CS. And I disrupted that because I did my first roam, 
Then I did my second roam, and Annie and I are now almost trading waves. And while she can't roam because she's an Annie, I am able to get priority and then roam. Priority and then roam. And it's really easy to repeat. You can see here, I literally do it. I literally roam gank three times in three minutes. Two times in bot, two times in uh, one time in top lane. And now I'm only, you know, three CS behind. So you can argue, yes, Annie should be punishing me more. But this is like plat, this is a plat one diamond Annie. So it's like, well, she should really understand this. And maybe I'm just playing the macro game quite well as well. So again, I take the CS, making sure I can reset the wave. So this helps Pantheon out. And now look what it allows Pantheon to do. He goes and covers my wave. Perfect. So what do I do? Macro understanding. I know Hecarim's at Rift Herald. Notice how I spam it. UD gets there. Perfect. Because Pantheon was mid lane, because of my roam here and my reset of his wave, he's able to come help this out. Now let's see what happens. And he gets out. My ult is a little bit cringe. Again, not the best ult here. I'm not playing the best. But what do we do? We get... We get UD out, we get Pantheon out, and we get another kill. I am right now 5-0. And this is where we start to regain the lead. Look, we're still at a bit of 100... Okay, we're even now in gold. And again, look what I've been able to create. Because of my pressure in bot lane, because of my pressure in mid, because of the pressure and the breathing room I gave my jungler, and because of the pressure I gave my top laner... We're all able to come together as a team without getting punished and try and again fight them. So now my team's doing this without me. Like they're fighting without me and they're winning. I'm coming up to clean up. That's great. But they're now able to be enabled through my earlier roams. They're now enabling themselves to actually pick up, you know, the pieces or pick up, you know, their deficits and actually start playing better. And again, notice Annie and I have, haven't been in lane at the same time for almost seven minutes of the game now. It's insane how you can actually create these situations. And look, again, I have complete roam priority there. Luckily, my team get the kill, so I don't have to go. But we get complete roam priority. I get a plating. So now I'm up, what is that, like 2.5k gold almost, 2.4k gold, and I've got a CS lead. What's happening bot lane? I, I could back. I'm on 1.3k gold. What do I decide to do? So they get the one for one. I'm running this. I'm running her down. Mastery emote for the BM. You shouldn't do that. Who's TPing? Who's TPing? Camille, what are you doing? And there we go. I didn't really need to flash that, but it's fine. Now, look, we've got a 3k gold lead. We went from like a 3k gold deficit or 3 or 4k deficit at like 5, 6, 7 minutes to a 3k gold lead. All because I, as a mid laner, made sure that I developed my own lane lead and then I spread it out to my map. Now you can say this is like a one-off game, but it's very easy to recreate these themes. And yes, you won't get teammates who group and actually start getting kills on their own, but know that it is possible and you should never give up, particularly if you've won your lane or you've established a lead, try and exert it into your teammates so you can help them generate leads because it's so hard to 1v9 right now in League of Legends. So you need to make sure you're getting your lead out to the rest of your team. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of highlights a bit more to you the power of roaming and how you can set up a uh, disconnect in your mid lane, particularly where you and your laner don't actually have to see each other for the entire kind of early mid game, that six to 12 minute mark you can actually make it so you never actually have to verse your mid laner if you don't want to through pop proper wave management.